Hey everybody, Tony D. Welcome to Screenwriting Tips. This is about how to write a spy movie. I don't think I did this one. I've done one on James Bond, but I don't think I've done one about spy movies in general. Maybe I have. If I've had, well, this one will be shot better and I'll have my cool bandana on. So how do you write a spy movie? Well, first you got to pick a good setting and you've got to pick a time and a place where intrigue is happening. Now, back in the day when we had the Cold War, it was easy. The Cold War setting is ideal for spy uh, settings, spy stories, because the Soviet Union was always the bad guy and they had tons of money. They seemed like the evil empire. They seemed like they were going to be difficult to defeat. They were a real superpower. And um, to have a character uh, go in and infiltrate uh, the Soviet Union, and they were constantly you know, using satellite countries to do various things. Or, or, or so if you went to one of their satellite countries, there was always like intrigue. There was always back and forth. You had, um, you know, Poland and, and, and East Germany and you had Cuba. You had all these places. Now it's really tough. Now a lot of movies default to a setting uh, that's historical. You know, they either go back in time to the Cold War, like Archer, the Americans, um, uh, uh, oh gosh, that one with Gary Oldman, something Tinker, something spy. I can't think of the name of it, but, um, they'll go back to a more historical setting, usually the cold war, but sometimes, uh, there was that TV show that did spies during the revolutionary war. That was kind of a cool take. I mean, there's all sorts of places time in history that's that's almost easy to pick right you pick a time in history where there was a lot of intrigue boom uh all you got to do is uh, is write the rest you've got you know you know all the big players that but if you're going to do one in the modern day it's a real challenge because you kind of got to pick and choose the enemy and then you have to create a scenario by which the spy character infiltrates. Because understand what a spy is. A spy is not a military guy. He's not meant to be an assassin. He is meant to infiltrate. In other words, he's meant to go undercover inside a foreign country behind enemy lines, uh, ostensibly, not necessarily an enemy, but to go into a foreign setting alone with no backup find out information, and then get out before he's caught. Sometimes he's there to sabotage or kill people, but ideally spies are sent to gather intelligence information. So the next step, if you're trying to set something in the modern day, is to pick usually a country that is a threat. And that is a huge challenge. So who is a threat if you're writing from an American perspective, to the United States? Well, let's see. China, obviously, right now, especially. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to see some spy stuff uh, done about the Chinese in the not-too-distant future. The Russians, kind of, still in the mix. It's a more difficult sell because they are the Federation and they are, uh, at least in uh, uh, for a lot of times, have been pretty, you know, willing to play ball, I'll say. You know, see, they seem to one piece. So it's it's a little hard to demonize the Russians, not like it was back in the Soviet era. You have the Iranians, but the problem with the Iranians is they're not really a threat, right? They are, you know, they're kind of a backwoods, second-rate country, no offense, that doesn't have the money or the means to really infiltrate. That's not to say they don't have their spies and they can't do some damage, but at the end of the day, they have to be more careful than anybody else because they'll just get wiped off the map if they do anything too crazy. Um, you have, then you have like countries that have a lot of power and influence, but they're not necessarily an enemy. So if you look at the Israelis, now the Israelis, Israelis have a top-notch spy team uh, known as the Mossad. The Mossad guys are like crazy good spies. So uh, those are an interesting group, 
And uh, in fact, Sasha Baron Cohen did a movie. Uh, I don't know if it came out yet. I think it did. I'd like to see that movie about the early days of the Mossad and him, his character joins it. And I, I think it's based on a real guy, you know. So those guys are kind of cool uh, to do stuff about if you're doing a serious, serious movie about spies. And uh, then you also have, say, like the Saudis. I always go back to the Saudis. The Saudis, Saudi Arabia, they would also be an interesting player on the scene simply because they have so much money and influence in the world. So it would be perfectly reasonable uh, to have a character either infiltrate the Saudis or even be a Saudi if you were going to do it from a different perspective. Um, and so what you get now though is a lot of, unfortunately a lot of movies because the Soviets are gone, and, and I've talked about this in my James Bond analysis, but even with like Triple X and movies like that, you get or Charlie's Angels, you get the idea of like, oh, here's some spies and they're going to fight bad guys. And the bad guys are so generic, not tied to any national group or country. They're not, they're not really tied to anybody because Hollywood's so afraid of demonizing uh, you know, a, a group of people, they either make up a country, which has been done in the comic books, and I, I think that's that's valid if you can make it semi-realistic, or they just sort of make it like a random evil guy who's worked for many different countries, as they have done in James Bond and a few others. I don't know, I don't think those are effective. I think you need to really ground uh, your your spy game into reality because if you're going to make it serious that's what you need now the james bond can be semi-serious but i think if you're going to do a serious spy movie you need an enemy or a situation that is very volatile so you know anywhere in the middle east that can be considered very volatile right i mean there's always stuff going on there um you probably a good setting would be something like post-war syria right? So you've got this war-torn country, they're trying to pull it back together, you got the Russians occupying it, I think we're still there protecting the oil fields, you got the Syrians who want to do stuff, certainly the Israelis want to keep their eye on things. So it's a hotbed, right? So that is a perfect setting for a modern-day plot uh, with spies. You know, it could be someone's trying to stir up trouble, trying to start the, the, the Cold War there, or the war that's cooled down, they're trying to start it up again for political reasons or whatever. Um, you could have guys who are trying to stop a group of terrorists who want to gin it up again. Um, there's also just things in general that are good for spy movies. So, for instance, loose nukes. Um, you know, they're after the fall of the Soviet Union, the nukes kind of, they're not all accounted for really. So, a handful of nukes running around and Lord knows where they ended up. So you could have a story about that. You know, you need stuff that's really, really grounded in reality if you're going to do a serious spy movie and you got to do your research. I mean, that's a heavily researched thing. The closest thing I, I did to a spy movie, I wanted to do like a female James Bond. So I started toying with that, but then I also wanted to do a vampire thing. So I ended up doing this screenplay. I still have it. It needs a rewrite, but it's called Thirst. And the main character is like a female James Bond. And um, uh, it's, a, it's about, it takes place right after the, a few years after the fall of the Berlin Wall. And the premise of the movie is um, the communists weren't good at much, but they were good at keeping the vampires at bay. And after the Berlin Wall falls, uh, the vampires sort of get set loose in uh, the Western world. And now it's a new thing that we have to deal with at a national security level. So I, I guess you'd call it like a kind of a mix of like a Tom Clancy novel and uh, a vampire one. So, um, but, uh, you know, you obviously that's a pretty fantastical <laughs> One, and I didn't really drill down too much into the spy game for that screenplay. I didn't have to. It was vampires. But if you're going to be 
you know, like a Tom Clancy thing. That is, that is like a spy novel. You know, it's not, it's not really a spy novel because the character's not a spy per se, but it's got that sort of tone and intrigue to it. There's military, there's national security issues. You know, there's assassins and things like that. So, and there's a difference between doing like a James Bond kind of thing and doing a grounded in reality spy game thing. The James Bond thing is not a model to use for your spy unless you're just basically trying to do your version of James Bond. If you're going to do a real spy story, you need to research about real spies and what they do and, and according to the time period. Um, I think there's a lot of fodder out there for uh, spy stuff, especially in this environment. But I think most of the um, focus would be on how the CIA, uh, like in the Richard Jewell movie that just came out uh, that um, Clint Eastwood directed, that's a, that, that explores the abuses uh, sort of in that world. Now it was the FBI, but you know you could go down the same path with the CIA. And, and show how, I, I think it was done a little bit in uh, Syriana, which was uh, that uh, George Clooney movie. So you, uh, you need to do your research. Uh, although I've heard that the Syriana movie was not quite there uh, in terms of the realism. But they had taken some stories from real life and then they, they tweaked them as they always do in Hollywood. And that's a problem too. See, if you take a real historical incident and then you drag it so far away from what it was based on, you know, it's not it's not that story anymore. I feel bad for the people who really went through that. I think you either got to kind of stick to the the historical account fairly much. I mean, granted, you got to make it a movie, but you know, if you if you drift so far away from it, it's like unrecognizable to the people who lived it. I I, I think you've kind of failed in your um, in your in your task you know uh you, you instead should have just said let's just you know use this story and and do our own version of it and that's not you know but that you know hollywood can't resist saying based on a true story <laughs> uh they, they absolutely cannot resist that's too good too good a copy uh you get too many great interviews out of it so um and it's also true that the united states uh, for a long time has been the aggressor on the, the world scene and uh, that doesn't bode well either for your spy because if you have a spy that's working for the US government what is he working for so they could do more drone strikes in Yemen you got to be wary of that you have to be wary of a guy who's uh, stealing all this information and then it turns out they just use it to kill a bunch of people you don't want that you want a spy or any protagonist really to be you know, the audience should like them. The audience, he, they, they, again, I talked about heroes in my Star Wars rant. You know, you got to have a good hero. A guy who, you know, the born identity is kind of a spy thing, sort of, not really. But it's got that sort of flavor to it. And, uh, you know, you, you like Jason Bourne because he's a good guy. I mean, he, he doesn't just indiscriminately murder people. Um, you need that in a protagonist. He can't be, he can't be a murderer. Uh, you know, in terms of indiscriminate murderer. And when James Bond kills people, they deserve it, right? You know, he doesn't just kill everybody. He doesn't, like, break into a hotel room, kill the guy he's after, and then kill, you know, the prostitute he was with, and then the bellhop because he walked in unexpectedly. That would make him a jerk. <laughs> he, you, you would, you know, you have to make your characters likable. So you have to make your spy likable. So you have to make his missions likable. And that's a challenge in this environment. So you got to come up, you know, you take something like the Khashoggi murder, right? You know, that is is rife for uh, a spy, a spy kind of thing. You know, a spy who has to figure out who killed some important figure in, um, in a foreign country that uh, who was maybe he was a contact for the CIA and now he's dead and he was a good guy and he was helping us and now you're you're trying to figure out who killed him and then then if the spy ends up killing the guy who killed him well then that's kind of justified right there's a there's a certain balance in your screenplay you want to you want to keep that good or uh, 
That was a good one. Uh, Argo. If you've ever seen Argo. That's, that's a pretty good spy movie, right? The guys have to go in and save the hostages. And, um, you know, it all worked out through the Canadian embassy and everybody got home. And yeah, it, was a, it, was a, it was a big deal. So, uh, uh, good movie, by the way. Ben Affleck, really good director. Not crazy about his acting. I'd say he gets me about 50% of the time on the acting. But his directing, whoo, his directing is on point. Definitely. Uh, and it's definitely on point in that movie. I think it's a really good film. Um, so, you know, when you do your spy movie, do your research. Pick an important locale. Your, your, your locale and your, the situation around it is urgently important so you got to pick something good for a spy to do and you got to try to keep him you know on the good side um you know unless you're doing some sort of story about a guy who you know goes walter white and becomes all dark and evil you know you got to keep your guy good uh and and that's tough to do when you know you got a license to kill anyhow that's the spy game and that's my tip for the day check out my books on Amazon.com, Wokistan a Novel, uh, A Political Satire, and The Pioneer's Horror Comedy, books one, two, three, and four. Uh, available ebook, trade paperback, Kindle Unlimited is free, and I will see you next time.